perfect time for long distance flights. Yet these engines are only a refinement of an engine invented over 2,000 years ago by Greek mathematician Hero of Alexandria. The Prince engine has long been used to turn the ordinary lawn sprinkler. This same principle explains the action of a toy water rocket. It explains the rushing flight of a boy's balloon and the balloon's ability to move a toy car. What action is common to all these devices? We well, study this principle with the toy balloon. Blowing up the balloon compresses the air inside and stretches the balloon. When the neck of the balloon is tightly tied, the compressed air pushes against the walls of the balloon, pushing equally as hard in all directions. When the balloon is untied, the air pushing into the neck can escape. It no longer provides a balance to the force pushing in the other direction against the balloon. The balloon is pushed in the direction away from the escaping air. This is the principle of reaction. The balloon is moved by a reaction force exactly equal and opposite to the action force of the escaping air. Remember, it is the reaction force pushing on the walls of the balloon which causes the balloon to move. The action force just pushes air out of the balloon. Isaac Newton first stated this principle many years ago. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Devices which operate on the reaction principle are called reaction engines. There are two important types. Jet engines and rocket engines. We can study jet engines with this toy cannon. The cannon has been loaded with an explosive mixture and hung so it can move easily. If we fire the cannon with an electrical spark, the cannon swings backward. Hot gases push out of the cannon's mouth and the reaction force swings the cannon backward. In review, a mixture of air and fuel ignites causing an explosion. Pressure from the explosion pushes hot gases out of the cannon's mouth and pushes the cannon backward. If we could reload and fire the cannon fast enough, it would continue to move in the same direction. We would have a workable reaction engine. During World War II, German scientists devised just such an engine to propel the dreaded buzz bomb. In this engine, the mixture of fuel and air was burned to produce a pulse of power. The exhaust gas was immediately replaced with more fuel and air to produce the next power pulse. This action, shown here in slow motion, produced the buzzing sound typical of this engine. The pulse jet design is still used in some model airplane engines. Unlike the pulse jet, the simplest kind of jet engine provides a steady power output. The hot, high-pressure exhaust gases produce a continuous reaction push or thrust. Here again, we find the few essentials of the jet engine. Fuel mixed with air to form a combustible mixture. Ignition to start combustion and a strong reaction thrust. This is a ramjet engine, so named because the engine must ram through the air at high speeds to bring in enough air for combustion. However, jet engines must often be operated when they are not moving through the air. To get enough air to burn the fuel and produce thrust, 
some of the power produced by the engine is used to run a turbine. The turbine is connected to an air pump or compressor which brings in the great quantity of air needed by the engine. The turbine gives this engine its name, the turbojet engine. Because jet-propelled airplanes must be able to move about on the ground as well as in the air, they must use turbojet engines. However, the turbojet engine is often combined with a ramjet. The ramjet section, called an afterburner, burns more fuel to produce added thrust for higher speeds or faster climbs. There is still enough oxygen in the exhaust gases from the turbojet section to burn the fuel used in the afterburner. Reviewing the turbojet engine, we have seen that it has but few moving parts. In the front of the engine is a compressor which pumps in huge amounts of air. Mounted on the same shaft is the turbine which turns the compressor. Behind the turbine, there may be a ramjet engine, the afterburner. By using a larger turbine, the engine's thrust can be used to turn a propeller, thus adapting the turbojet engine for use at low altitudes or for short flights. The jet engines we've been studying need oxygen from the air to burn fuel to produce thrust. But what about engines that operate beyond the Earth's atmosphere? Rocket engines can operate in the airless space above the Earth because they carry their own oxygen as well as fuel. Like the jet engines, rockets are reaction engines, depending upon the production of high-pressure gases to develop a reaction thrust. We can most easily study the rocket by using a toy engine. Inside the engine, a pellet of solid material contains both fuel and oxygen. A short fuse is used to ignite the fuel. It should not surprise us to find that the fuel will burn in the air. But suppose we place some of the fuel in a vacuum jar and pump out the air. By watching the candle flame, we can tell when the oxygen is gone. Now a spark ignites the fuse, and the rocket fuel burns as well in a vacuum as it did in the air. Using the vacuum jar, we can also show that a rocket engine will develop thrust in a vacuum. Rockets actually work better in a vacuum because there is no air to hinder the rocket's flight through space. In this film, we have seen that an action in one direction will produce a reaction in the opposite direction. Specially designed devices enable us to make practical use of reaction as a usable thrust. We have found that the simplest reaction engine is the ramjet. By adding a turbine to drive an air compressor, the jet engine can operate while on the ground. By using a jet engine to turn a propeller, we can adapt the jet to economical short flight, low altitude operation. We have seen that rocket engines can operate in the vacuum of space because they carry both fuel and oxygen. Modern reaction engines have provided the key to economical, high-speed air transportation. The use of jet engines has made possible larger airplanes and faster flights. But the jet engine is still earthbound. A rocket with its own fuel and oxygen supply has placed artificial satellites in the sky and has carried man and his machines into space. The expansion of man's conquest of space depends upon reaction engines which are not tied to the oxygen of the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs>